morning to our online viewers and um, we are here at the Rupert Museum this morning. We are at the Science Meets Art exhibition, Art Addressing Stigma and Illness, and we will be discussing some of the artworks on show here. Uh, the exhibition opened to the public on the 31st of October in 2021, no 2020, sorry, um, and it will conclude in February of this year. Uh, originally, we started work on the project by inviting local creators to supply work to work with the cell images. And the cell images were generated, the micrographs, were generated by st students from the science, physiological science department. They approached Professor Lewis and they suggested that they do something with the very beautiful images and the beautiful images actually showed or explain, in this case, a brain, a brain cancer sphere. And the colors are explained in the brochure. There's a, an accompanying brochure, exhibition brochure, 30 page brochure. It is very, it's comprehensive, it's informative, it is translated in various languages. And you can view the brochure online um, by accessing it through the Rupert Museum website. So what happened was we had the images of the micrographs and they, we chose, selected images of illnesses such as dementia and Alzheimer's and in this case, as I said, brain cancer. Those were illnesses that were identified by community leaders and community members and artists as illnesses that were stigmatized and needed some sort of visual communication so that it can be accessed by communities. So what we're trying to do here is have a visual reference between artwork or craft and the cell images. So it forms a communication point or a point of discussion. It's a starting point, it's an entry point where it becomes accessible to the viewer because it's a visual uh, communication, it's visual language, it's visual vocabulary. When you go out, if you show this to the children in the community, they will recognize this as not something strange and unknown. They will recognize it as a basket that is generally, generally available. So in this case, when somebody says somebody has brain cancer and you can access the exhibition or the brochure, you can say it looks similar to the colors and the light and the little beads and the in there, and there is immediately an access to the brain cell. Brains. In this case, this is cleaning of protein as well in the cells. We have on the wall there how that the molecular imaging techniques are a major tool in the research field. This basket was created by Nomsa Mukwera. Nomsa is with us today, and she will be doing a demonstration, demonstration afterwards of making the bowl, how she approaches her art and her craft. Um, and if you look at her work here, there's a very keen sense of color that's been used. Now, I would like to move to Zach, Zachariah McQuira's work. On the opposite wall, we have a husband and wife due with us today. They work together. Um, Nomsa worked with Zach in his printmaking studio many years ago. So she's got that background. And then she worked in leather, making functional handmade items. And then she moved to the, what she's currently working in, a series of bowls using glass seed bead bowls or beads. Okay, I'm moving to Zachariah Maquera on this side. Now, Zachariah has experience or he was trained in visual art, drama and dance. Um, what he's using here is a very special technique. It's a very personalized technique and something that he's created. He uses paper and then he uses tools like etching tools and knives and he will cut out the top surface or layer he will cut into in, in size into the paper to create figures, to create uh, designs and um, shapes. Then having cut out, it looks like a lino block almost, but it's a, a, a quite a thick paper that he's using. Then he will color it with oil paint. And Zach works, usually works figuratively 
in, for this exhibition, he had to work with abstract forms because he was referencing, in this case, again, this is an Alzheimer's cell that we're looking at with white areas containing toxins uh, which have to be cleaned out. So Zach referenced that cell. He used another image well, which is also visible, can be seen on the brochure. Now, what is interesting is because Zach works figuratively, figuratively usually, in this case where he sort of approached it with having an abstract idea in mind, it still retained the figurative aspect. And Zach always tells a story. He tells a story or he uses a narrative about his own heritage, the heritage and the influence and the stories and the legends and the myths from Africa. He's a storyteller referencing Africa. And it is very clear when we look at this that there is a narrative here as well. There is an untold story. There's an unknown story. As in the case with the cells, we are not fully aware what is going on. There's something under the surface. In this case, Zach is telling us there is something else going on here. There is an untold story, an unfolding story happening here. When I say Zach works figuratively, I'm going to refer to this image. This is a collagraph work, and it is worked on the reverse side as well. The collagraph image um, is created by gluing pieces of paper onto a substrate and then printing it. In this case, working on the reverse side, Zach did not have material. He could not access material. He only had this. So he used it on the other side. So what came out of necessity is actually giving us a very special, um, very special object because we now have this art piece. Um, this is quite a thick board compared to the paper that he uses for this technique. And this technique where he cuts out the paper, he calls um, woven lines. So his medium and his technique as his own title. Um, and again, you can see the narrative in here. The other thing about Zach and his storytelling he speaks to the past, but he also tells the stories that is currently un unfolding. So there's a, a, a new narrative being formed with past and present being combined in the artwork. And the color, I want to get to the color because I did not know that originally. Zach is colorblind. This is Zach's work. That is Zach's work. This is Zach's work. But Zach is colorblind. What is happening, he used to work in a printmaking studio many years ago. They're currently working in a single room at home, a family room, where the family gathers and they do their artwork. So it's a studio cum family room. So there's a gathering of people. And because he cannot see the, the colors, the family will give him advice as to what to use. So Zach is using codes and he will order his paint by the codes. So what is going to be demonstrated in the library a bit later is the work that Zach does. When he has carved the paper, it is usually in soft grays and browns and, and yeah, that's about the color. Beautiful objects, but because if he wants to add color, he will make use of people around him to advise him on what works and what does not work. And this cell references, uh, this cell is referenced here in this artwork. And then here we have more work by Zach. It's another Alzheimer's cell, very bright and colorful. Um, this was generated, the micrograph, by Professor Ben Lewis. And then Zach worked on the patterns and the abstract flow. Now, if we look at this again, there is an abstract concept here. but. It's not dissimilar to a landscape, an image of a landscape. It looks like a landscape and water and rivers flowing here. But so again, it's telling a story instead of merely copying the abstract shapes that we see in the cells. And again, the coloring, he was advised by his family, his close family. I want to get back to the overall exhibition. 
We have six artists and creatives presented here on the exhibition and then um, the scientists and researchers and science students and work by Professor Ben Lewis. So it's a combination of many people, but the artists are mostly from this area, from Stellenbosch area and from Kayamandi specifically. Zaka and Amsa are from Gordons Bay, but the other four artists are from Kayamandi. Um, and it was wonderful working with the participants because we were under strict lockdown and we had to get this exhibition ready. Most of the events, most of the exhibitions was originally, were originally either postponed and then eventually cancelled. Now, having everything cancelled, as we all know, for the creatives in this country and worldwide, it was a lot of disillusion. Dis we were disillusioned. Uh, we had nothing to hope for, we had nothing to work for. But in the case of this exhibition, I want to thank the Rupert Art Museum or the museum and the Rupert Art Foundation because the feedback I got was, when will you have the exhibition ready? And my response was to that, oh goodness me, it's lockdown. I can't get the works. I can communicate. In some cases, I couldn't because people did not have the finances to buy airtime or whatever. But so we had limited communication. But in the, like, Contacting Zach, sometimes I could hear in his voice when I phoned him that things aren't going well, things are a bit difficult. But then talking about the exhibition and what needs to be done, all those conversations ended on a positive note. There was a lot of hope. The exhibition became a symbol of survival. And I think with creative people, I think it's our duty and we don't have a choice to think creatively, how are we going to face the future with events and things that have been cancelled? It's easy to stand here and say this, but I had to think about this exhibition creatively because, as I said, I could not access the artworks. I could not get the artworks to take photographs of it, and in the end, we compiled the brochure. Why I showed this one is this image is part of it is included in the brochure, the figurative work. I had this work with me because it was ready for an exhibition that had been postponed, it will take place in February. But we had to put it in the brochure. Please access the brochure. Um, we have the artist in there, we have the artworks in there, we have the cells, we have descriptions of the cells. Um, and yeah, and think about the future creatively. Think about the symbol of survival of exhibitions and think about opportunities because Rupert Museum said, create your own artwork to match and hashtag it on Instagram. So there is an opportunity for people at home to also become part of this exhibition. We will now move to the demonstration where Zach and Nomsa is ready to receive you and uh, Zach will demonstrate the woven line technique and Nomsa will do her glass bead baskets. Yes, um, you're welcome to our, our workshop. My name is Zachariah Mukwira and then on my right is uh, Nomsa Mukwira my wife. So I'm going to take you through um, the workshop in making um, one of the cells um, that you have seen already in the, in the brochure, um, Rupert Museum here. So these are the cells that uh, we are going to concentrate on uh, science uh, meets arts and crafts. So this is art I'm doing and then she's going to be doing craft. So here we go. So what we have here is um, I'm going to use oil paint to paint the piece and then I also have glue sometimes when I cut um, the piece because I'm going to be cutting um, and also um, when I cut then I can um, I can um, 
glue it up uh, to look to the uh, perfection of how I want it to be like, as it were. So, okay, so uh, this is it. So here we start now, um, I'm, I'm now drawing the piece, as it were. Nomsa, you can talk. Yes, my name is Nomsa Mkwira. I will show you how to do the, the cell that you are seeing here. Then in a, in a bead form. So I'll start with the, this color that you see, the blue color I'm using. Um, uh, 450 grams blue color then I put it first and then I put it aside then I use um, galvanized steel binding wire uh, 0 0.9 millimeters to wire up my beat up my to make a, a line of uh, beads. So as it is, I take it from this roll and then you must make sure your wire is straight. Make, make it straight after the end. And then when you're starting, when you're starting, I usually use this small uh, pliers but it depends on the person that is using the pliers. Some people, they like the big ones, and some people, they like the small one. So I'm comfortable with the, the small one. So make sure when you're starting everything, you must close the end, end of the wire, so that the beads won't fall off. Won't fall off like, like this. You make a knot. And then you come at the other side of the wire. You, you make it like a hook so that the beads will get in the wire, just like this. As they get in, in and then you push them down. You can use four wire, uh, four depending on the pressure of work that you have. Sometimes you can use one, one wire, or maybe four, six, depending on. So, um, after drawing, then I'll start to cut through uh, the piece, as it were, so that I can paint, as it were. So, here we go. Here we go. So, just drawing, following uh, the design that you see here uh, of the cell that we are doing. Um, you can follow us on um, Instagram as well as um, YouTube. YouTube of Rupert Museum, as it were. So here we go. So this is a knife that I've prepared. So I just put in, uh, put in um, some cushioning so that it doesn't cut me. So in the same manner, this is the way I've prepared it. And then now I start to cut the outline of my piece as it were. So I'm cutting out, cutting out piece. It's a technique that I developed on how I make my artwork, uh, borrowed from the uh, way of uh, choreography for printmaking, but now I'm just doing uh, the cutting, and then after cutting, then I will paint the piece. So this is the process of how I do it. So I can quickly cut it up, as it were, can follow through here. Actually, you cannot see it uh, until it is cut out as it were. So here we go, following out the lines that I've marked on the on the paper. So
So here we go again. I can pull out this piece to make my darker portions as it were. So here we go to make my outline. I forgot to mention about the corset. As you can see, the corset is round. So there is a cross in between to reinforce to reinforce the 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 wire that I'm I'm, I'm doing now. So just for now, I'll put it aside. And for the containers, they are for putting the beads as we are working now. Some people they they it depending on the people. You, you sometimes you can use this one, but I think it's too small. Maybe the beads will fall off. But this one is better depending on how you, you, you like the, the container. But I'm, I like the bigger uh, space so that it will allow me to put the beads uh, nicely. So you choose which one you want. Yeah, and, the, and the, I think it's the, the, the end part of the corset is this, so I'll come up to that one. For now, I'm doing the, starting with the blue color, then I'll show you when I'm adding another color. Yes, um, it is, this is participatory. Every time she's singing with the beads, I continue with the cutting of my cell, as it were. So here we go. Looking at the piece there, um, concentrating on the lines that I just uh, drew, and then I continue uh, with a smooth hand. One doesn't have to be stiff, just cutting out these beautiful designs or the markings that I've done as it were. I also uh, like the music that is coming out from the bees as it were. Yeah, so this becomes part and parcel of uh, the workshop as it were. So making music. I'm done with the blue. Um, I want to add another, another um, color again, the red. As you can see, maybe I add a little bit of blue. And then I put red. Just a bit of red. Bit of maybe more of blue than I mix. I put again. As you can see, this is how I do it. So I'm in it adding another color. Yes, I continue to cut, just follow through. Yeah. The people at home, just follow through. Let's cruise in together as I cut around my piece. And then pull out the pieces, pull out the pieces. Yes. So this whole process is like printmaking, but in a different way, because I will color in using uh, paint brushes. Uh, as well as um, rags of cloth um, with different um, colors. But here it looks like the colors I'm going to do is um, black and then white also. You can see the marks of the piece uh, that I have on my table here as it were. So this is it. So uh, in my in my wiring, if you maybe find uh, one of the beads is maybe smaller because there are some ridges in between the beads. So I usually use a, a pliers, and then I try to crush it, but uh, make sure you 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 close because it's too dangerous for the people near you. Yes. So I crush just I like this. Close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> and then I move on. 
Yeah. So I move on. It's true, like even when we are working at home, me and my wife, she's doing her beats, and then I'm cutting close by, even the children sitting close by. We always advise when she's at the point of breaking the beads, um, advise them to close the eyes. Because when you break the beads, they look like a bullet coming out. And then if they just hit your people of the eye, then it can cause problem to the, to the eye, as it were. So this is it. So I'm, I'm, I'm still continuing with my cutting, as it were. So this is the process. So I'm done with this one. I'm going to add another, another color again for the black. Then when you are working, you make sure the 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 front part is sharp, so that you get through the 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 beads easily. So always make it straight, or use a stone. I usually use a stone to make it sharp again, so that it's quick for me. So still working on the on the cell. I'm working on my white parts there. Working on my white parts. Cutting through. It went here. Yes. Still cutting through. Yes. You have to have a sharp uh, edge blade and then follow it through. Follow it through. Right. Yes. I have contrast here of my piece in this way. Yes. While you listen to the music of the beads, and then I'm cutting. Unfortunately, my knife doesn't make any. Yes. Yes. So um, to take you through, like I used to do uh, printmaking, um, like making colographs. So those are the things that gave birth to this idea of this type of artwork, as it were. So if I could uh, maybe pull out something here. So this is how I started, as it were. So um, this is Masonite board, like the ones the people used to make cupboards, wardrobes. So we used to buy these, cut it, bevel it, and then here we could draw on paper like this one, right? Um, and then cut with a scissor or a set of knife like this one and then glue it up with wood glue. And then these markings here, this is your crack filler. The builders used to fill in the cracks of the house when it's cracking down. So I could mix it up uh, with water and loads of wood glue and then 
build it up like this build it up like this and then when that is ready put it outside to dry for a day so when it is dry then I can take a rasper to smoothen it up right after it is smooth why I'm smoothing it up sometimes to uh, to bevel it so that when I do the inking process it will not uh, destroy the paper but before that um, aspect of printing I would put in clear varnish to protect it or here in South Africa I think this use something like lacquer I'm not sure but clear varnish and then leave it for a day to dry so um, when it is dry then I go back to the principle uh, the, to the aspect of uh, printmaking. So I will have my etching inks and then some rugs. In most cases I used to use toothbrushes to ink the piece. Ink the piece, ink the piece, and then after that then I will rub in with my fingers and then clean the edges, dump the paper in the water and then Take the dumb paper and then this is already inked with oil paint, it's moist. The two together onto the etching press and then transfer the image from the board onto the paper. Right. So at one point I was looking at the board. Then I said, okay, why can't I just cut onto the paper? Because there was a point I didn't have an etching press, expensive to acquire one. Then I said, okay, why can't I develop something else? A new idea was given back. Then I started cutting one of original. This could not be taken onto the etching press as it way. So I could only cut through and then ink it a zip way and then uh, sorry and then um, make one original maybe I can show you one piece that has been completely cut through a zip way so this is one a zip way so this is the process where we want to reach it a zip way so um, this is a cell but this is something else. It's a mixed media. It's a contemporary piece. You see a person there with a horse with the hands there that look like um, the hair, dreadlocks, as it were. And then you see um, some leaves and fish. So this whole idea was given birth from the aspect of holography collage on the other side you see there is also another piece so uh, to make use of material as it were so I could put a piece on either side as it is materials are expensive so I could ink here make a piece and then the other side so I have two pieces here look at you can see like this one here and then this one here so um, I put this one away. So, um, as I said, like to show you the result of everything, when a piece has been cut and then you paint it. So this is the uh, sort of like a finished piece, as it were. This is a finished piece. You can add color or sometimes you can have it in monochrome like that piece there in black and white, as it were. So this is the whole idea, friends. So also here, this is the whole concept. So I continue to produce my cell. You can fly on. <laughs> yeah, so I'm about to finish my wiring. Then I'll show you how to start the, the corset.
Right. So, so actually, the cutting uh, aspect takes, uh, it's a lengthy process. Lengthy, lengthy process. So you, you have to know everything from your head, what you want to achieve. But the good thing on this piece um, is just uh, copying what is there, and then, um, but also interrupting it in my own contemporary way of um, registering my technique, as well as my style, as well as my uh, storytelling aspect of my pieces. Because most of the stories, uh, I mean, my paintings that I'm doing, they are uh, given birth from uh, stories that we got from our elder people, like I got my stories from my grandmothers, it way. But um, here we are. We are doing something else apart from the stories we got from our legends, uh, myths on the African uh, storytelling. But now we are doing something that is uh, more complex so that we have here today. For now, I finished uh, wiring, as you can see. Now, there is something that I want to show you. You must always leave a space. It can be this big or maybe this big. And then at the end, you always close so that the, your beads won't fall off again. So just like this. And then because this space, is, I will show you why you leave a space at the end. Because when you're starting it at this point, you'll be pushing the, the beads at the, from, from the top to the uh, down. And then you have to have extra space to allow your beads to fit on the corset. So I'll show you now. I'm finished with uh, wiring the, the beads. So now I will show you how to start. I have a 0 0.5 galvanized wire. So you have to see the part that you're working on. Is, is this part too big or too small or maybe a bigger space? Then you, you make sure your, your wire fits on that uh, space. So I always uh, make, uh, make it bigger so that when you, you are working, you, you don't have to end the wire to be uh, shorter. So I make it bigger, always uh, longer. So I will show you how to do it. For now, I will remove the wire from the bobbin. And then I will continue from there. Very good. So. I'm still uh, following my drawing that I did. As I said, the process is lengthy. Uh, it takes time. Like when I'm doing bigger pieces, uh, it takes up to two, three, four days uh, cutting bigger pieces like, um, yeah, so that you achieve a, a, a very good uh, contemporary piece. I think uh, at the end of this program, Maybe I will be able to show you some of the bigger pieces that I, that I took, uh, I, that I did as it were. So it took me maybe uh, a week, only cutting. And then later on, um, paintings, also another time that you give uh, to a piece that you make. So when you are using the the wiring, don't use the 0 0.9 one because it's too hard. It's only for the putting the beads to making your thread. I always call it a thread. You must only use, use it for the threading. And when you are stitching, when you are starting, you use the 0 0.5 galvanized steel wire because it's thin and it's not hard to, to roll it around. So I'll just put the 0 0.5 here in the 0 0.9 here. 
then I'm starting. So you have to check your hands, are they properly done? And then I put the wire just like this. As you can see, and then I twist. And then I take another one again. If you make a mistake, you are free to start all over again, but I started making mistake, but I started with uh, this basket. I didn't know, I only saw people working with uh, other ladies in my husband Zeke's uh, place. So I saw them working. As they were working, I said, no, since I don't have anything to do, I will learn how to do this. So I started from this, imagine from this, I was mixing a bowel, uh, beads. I didn't know how to do it, but I figured out up until I, I knew how to, to make a basket. So I'll show you the finished product when I am doing the, ba the bowels, the baskets. So there's a, there are rules and regulations on how to make a, ba a basket. I'll come up to that. Let me do this one first. So for now, I'm doing the the corset. So when you're done with this, uh, the tying of wire, and then you come up to the side. I think the, the blue is too much. Let me cut this side. Maybe remove the excess blue, because I think it's too much for now. Yes. Beautiful. So mm -hmm. I still looking at the piece there. So I'm still cutting, yeah, still cutting to build up my piece as it were. It's coming up, see how it's going to look like. It's uh, so far so good. Some of the pieces, I don't need to have to draw them, but I uh, just see what is on the ground and then uh, Pencil it through with the knife. So a knife here is like our drawing tool. So My knife is like a drawing tool, as it were. So it's drawing with a knife. So I'm starting to make a corset. I put the wire right through. Make it a bit bigger. You see the, your hand will be down, and the other, the thumb will be holding so that it won't make a mistake and then you twist your wire up like this and then you tie and then I make sure I want to start making like this and then like this and then you pull just fastening the first the first um, start, the first point that I'm starting on. Then I take the beads. It depends on you. If you put one, it's fine. If you put two, it's fine. So for now, I'll start with one. And then I use one of the, the 0 0.9 thread right through. And then I tie again. It's just a matter of fastening. The, the beads to the corset. And I come to the side again. Coming up again. Sure, okay. Um, like my etching tool here because there isn't much that I can etch onto this uh, piece. Apparently I will just use it to um, put in my name here as it were. But I want to believe um, besides looking at uh, this piece that we have before us, I will also um, uh, put the details of Zach. So, 
always, besides putting my name, what I've developed is a style. When people see it, besides having the name on it, they will see the fish and the leaves, then they will know this is a Zek piece. So that in itself I could easily use, um, use my uh, etching tool, like I can quickly draw something here on the side, as it were, like that. See? Right. Because fish has become like my symbol of hope, multiplication and increase. So I always put it there. It is part, it has become part and parcel, parcel of my creative um, tool, as it were. So I put a fish there using my uh, etching tool. So you can play around, see. So it's all about being creative, as it were. So I can put in some, something in there to just to make it, to break the monotony. It becomes boring, a piece should be um, palatable, as it were. As you can see at this piece, it looks like something that is edible. <laughs> Besides, these are cells that are causing havoc, uh, sicknesses and disease, but when you look at them colored, it feels like you want to chew them. But besides they're chewing us, causing some problems, some diseases. Yeah, so here we go. Now on my part, the beating now is about to come up nicely, as you can see. I'm doing the part, this part of blue. When you have this thread here, just leave it hanging like this. I will show you how to, to remove it. But you go around and round up until the end. So I'm just finishing up to put the blue. Don't count the, be the beads. Just make it straight. Always make it straight. If it's five beads or six, it depends on the space of your this opening from here to here. Yeah, if you maybe sometimes you can put 10 or depending on the space of the, of the corset. So as I'm doing like this, make sure it's straight, it doesn't wobble. Thank you, so we still go on. As I still progress with the cutting as it were. So, um, as I said, it's a lengthy process, coordinating the eye, the hands, the knife, so that you cannot cut your fingers, as it were. But um, the idea is to cover or produce a masterpiece, a good piece, uh, contemporary but also not forgetting that we are doing these pieces for the educative uh, so it's a project. Yeah, it's a project. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So project that we are undertaking, uh, but also enhancing the aspect of creativity, not to just sit and wait for somebody to push you, but uh, take, uh, it's just taking your own self to some greater heights, some challenges, and then we overcome those and uh, be creative in this time of uh, um, COVID-19, yeah. And it's going to have a certain kind of effect that will come to the surface and what work will, because of other things being cancelled. Yes, yes. You can tell us about how the markets, you can tell us the markets. 
Yeah, thank you so much. Like as it is now, um, uh, because of the COVID, um, havoc that has been caused, I mean, uh, it has caused around the world and also here in Western Cape, South Africa in general, like we are here in uh, Stellenbosch, the number of markets that we used to trade and uh, sell our wares, but uh, due to that, uh, we cannot partake because of the uh, COVID issues that are affecting the whole um, world. So we have not been spared as it were. So um, the opportunities that arise are that at times you can sit at home, do something and also like um, taking part in such work shops like this one so that we can also educate people at home. So our creative mind should not be stopped by the aspect of Corona because we should live beyond it. We should move around it, mm -hmm. find a way, there is hope. So like what uh, we should do is uh, to love what we do. So have love, have faith in everything that you do and then one day you will be rewarded. So the key is to keep on moving, not to just uh, cry and complain about the aspect of Corona. But the idea is to be creative and then move on. Isn't it so, so no, sir? Yes, it's mm. true. Mm. It's true. So as you can see now, it's coming up. The red part of the cell is now coming up. So the other thing that I want to put on or add on is with your hands. I'm t uh, saying this to women or even men that when you are staying at home with nothing to do, but with your hands you can maybe make something like this and then you sell. You don't have to just wait and cry or complain, mm. but you can work with your hands and, pr and move mountains. Exactly. Yeah, especially women, you don't have to just wait for, for things to happen. You have to fight for, for everything in life. Working with your hands, you can make um, a difference in your life, a difference in your life. Yeah, it's true, because um, we are blessed by the works of our hands. See, every time we have to do something, we have to work, whether you work for somebody or for yourself, but many times the best is to be um, working for yourself. Yeah. yeah, that is the best medicine for yourself. Do so, something that you enjoy and then at times share with the world like we're doing. The aspect of sharing is greater, not to be um, selfish. So the idea is to sh share. And then uh, like the aspect of love, the world is full of people. So what we have to do is to love one another and share as it were. So, here we go, sharing, yeah. Do you want to say something about the color? Oh, the color, oh, thank you. Yes, um, I'm gifted here to have my wife around. She has been the pillar of my painting, uh, journey as it were. So I am colorblind. I don't see color. So in most cases when I'm painting in my house or wherever I go, I always put my family in um, the aspect of color. So many times when I'm painting in my living room, I've got a table, a palette facing the wall and they are behind me. 
So as I paint, I need color assistance. So they always assist me in the colors to uh, blend into my piece, into my creativity. So my family has been, um, have played a very great um, deal in my art career as it were, because without them, we will not survive. So every time I, 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 I look up to them when I'm painting uh, to help me choose the colors and uh, sometimes we argue, I'm, look, I'm looking at, at yellow uh, or I'm thinking it's yellow but they say it's green. I'm looking at brown and then they say it's red. So they always help me with the palettes my palette, my colors. So I'm so grateful to have a supportive family behind my um, creative journey. So as it is, I said, it's a journey. In our journeys, we need one another. So we are together. So we keep on encouraging one another every day, as it were. So we depend on each other. As a family, we grow together. So we thank God for that. So, um, so the color aspect, I always look up to them. Even here when we came in the morning, I was looking at this piece, I said, Nomsa, what colors are you seeing? He says, okay, there's black and gray. And gray. Yeah. So I said, okay, let me see the palette that I have to produce, then I mixed up my colors here so that I will paint in. Uh, So I had okay, approval so that I can um, win this piece with the colors that uh, I would like to achieve on this piece as it were. So I'm so grateful to have such a beautiful, supportive wife in the mind of creativity that she has, she has um, in her. Also owing to my kids as well at home, they also support help me uh, with the, the, the aspect of color, so that I tackle the issue of color blindness, but to encourage you guys at home, that should not um, hinder you or stop you from doing whatever you can. Yeah, you can do anything. Disability is not inability, so it's achievable, just from your head. It's all from, it starts from your, I mean your, your, your brain. Yeah, once uh, registered there in your brain, it's achievable. Yeah. So, as you can see, now it's starting to show, the colors are coming up, and especially for women, it's, it's I want to add on to I mean to show you, to tell you that it is important to do this. Maybe make a corset like a, as I'm doing. It would be nice when you are saving you, maybe your husband or your your family, family members, your friends. And then you know this one was done by you. You feel proud and honored about having such a thing in your house that is being done by you. So. Keep on doing it up until the end. Yeah, so the idea is to be creative. Yes. Do something. Yeah, so we chose this career, printmaking, painting, and uh, bidding because there is uh, joy. Actually, we find peace and joy to be creative in this aspect. And then also I want to believe it's also um, cost effective. And then the material costs are not prohibitive. It's not very expensive, but uh, in everything that you love to do, you, you find a way around it and then uh, find the resolve to do it. Because what you love, uh, you can always 
It's achievable. Just put your mind to it. Yeah. Just to finish, yeah. But sometimes, yeah, I think half a day, mm -hmm. yeah. So depending on the size of the bow, mm -hmm. yeah. If it's small, then the lesser time you have. So as you can see, I'm coming up to the corsetti. Then as you can see, my beads are finished now. So you cut the top part. Removing, removing this knot, and then you throw it away. Then I come up again to the color that I want to add on. So I'm adding on this one. Then I put this one aside because I'm done with this one. Put this one aside. I like working on big uh, space so that it will, it will allow my hands to move freely. So my aspect is cutting and pulling out. So the beauty of this paper is called Velcro board. It has got two layers. So I just cut to a certain depth. I forgot to tell you, to a certain depth. It's not only any type of paper. This one is called Velcro board, um, 350 grams, but you, you can always um, get something um, with a higher grammage, which is um, also good. Yeah, so the idea is to just cut to a certain depth. Uh, at times, you can cut and mess up, up to the back, but I always, use the glue and then also some perch of brown brown like i've got um, this um salo tape is very good because it is a non um uh, what is this uh, acid yes acidic yeah so yeah so it will preserve the piece for some years to come as it were, so um, that's what we, yeah, enjoy doing as it were. Yeah. So, still cutting, looking at the piece, as it were. Cutting the pieces as you can see, concentrating on that portion there. And cutting. And there we go. Cutting. Mm. So. Sure, exactly. Always, I, I, I do have titles to support my works that I do because. Um, most times they are inspired by stories that I'm telling. So um, my works always have a title. They always have a title because the titles, titles are given birth from the story that I'm telling. So yeah, yeah, I do have stories. And then at times people come up with um, their own um, 
pieces. Like for, for some time now, I've been doing um, some pieces of um, animals like a dog. Somebody gave me um, a piece of dog to paint. So they just gave me a picture of a dog to paint. They just said, okay, do a dog, but um, do, it, do the, 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 the Zex style, as you can see. Let me just bring it to you again. There it is. That's my dog. So they just gave me an idea of a dog, but if you can look, there's my fish. There's the fish, and then the other shapes that I incorporated. So I have a motto here in my uh, painting drive. I say, think blessed. If you fall into a river, check your pockets for fish. So this is why you always see fish in my pieces. Fish, to me, it means increase. Fish, to me, it means uh, life. It means more. And then also you can see some uh, look like leaves. It's also the aspect of life. So that's what I enjoy doing. So most of my pieces, as it were, they do have titles. Here we go again. Uh, it's upside down. So here I call this one the bride price. So this is the queen that we are Mary, and then Ngudi cows that were accepting from the uh, young man who was taking uh, my daughter. So we accept cows in our African tradition. Some donkeys, some horses, because I believe uh, somebody was telling me that in, in, in Lesotho, they accept uh, horses because um, the terrain, they use horses, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is the, yeah, the way I work, is it way. So, this is it. So, it's a way of life, is it way. That's life. Yeah. Now I think I can start to uh, paint my piece. I can start to paint my piece. So here we got um, um, taps, turpentine. I dip my turpentine, and it's either I use a brush or a rug. So here I'm going to use a rug. There we go. See, painting now. See, painting now. Here we go. Look at that. Can I say something? Now, as you can see, my cell is coming up. So my thread now is short, this, this wire that it can't go around. So I'm thinking of stopping here. So I have to cut this this uh, thread or maybe leave it like that but I have to make a, a, a knot again to close it up and then I'll put another thread again so that's the secret when your thread gets finished along the way you make a knot just like as I'm uh, doing it just like this or maybe cut it shorter and then we leave it like that. And then we thread, take a 0 0.9 galvanized wire and start all over again to put beads. And seeing the space that you are left with, so you must measure with your mind that, okay, this space that is here, that is left, I have to make a, this size of a wire. So remember to make it straight always, because if you make, uh, just leave it like this, it will cause your, your mat or your
cause it to be uh, clumsy and make some space in between. So you always make it straight when you are starting to work with beads. I'll show you again how to do it. Right, so here I'm painting using um, oil paint. So the beauty um, of oil paint, uh, just like printmaking as I said, uh, where I've caught the oils uh, goes onto the paper and it sinks, sinks, sinks into it. And then where I already made, made my cuttings and then they register the outline and everything. So I, 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 I yeah. I squeeze it through with a piece of cloth. Then here we go. See. So I'm putting the beads on the wire. The dark and dark uh, blue, the light blue and the red. So I'm advising you to, to start and go to the end. Don't leave. It. Start your project and then get uh, tired and stop from along the way. You must go to the end. It's nice when you're at the end and then you, you feel joy and happiness when you have, you have finished everything. So I pull the beads up to the end. So this is it. I'm still inking it, progressing. As we go by, bit by bit, makes a bundle. So, yeah, let's see what comes out as I work through it. Yeah, there we go. With my color onto it. Putting in my color. I'm mixing my color with taps as well as the um, um, medium for painting uh, that we have here. Oh, wow. This is it. Uh, oil medium. This one I'm using here to, paint. To, to, to make my oil well thinned so that it can seep through onto this paper and uh, onto the pieces that I did cut as it was. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So in my asset, I, I advise people to do the beading, maybe to teach your youth of uh, kids or boys boy and girl to do this at home so that they, they, don't, they won't have, uh, uh, they won't have um, time to walk around and waste time. So it, it's nice to teach them how to work using, using their hands and then earn a living out of that because this, nowadays there's a problem of, of jobs. Unemployment, yeah. Unemployment. Mm -hmm. So because of these trying times, so we am advising the youth to work with their hands. Don't just sit around and complain. You can do any living out of this. So you can see the way I'm progressing the color. There we go. Just color it up, everything remove all the white and then uh, later on you will see how I will progress with this piece um, with time. Yeah. Well, let's make a knot at the end because when you don't then your, your beads will fall off always. So well, let's make it straight for the for your product to be nice and neat.
Here we go again. So I chose to use um, a rug cloth to put, um, I mean, to add some color. It's, it's faster and easier, but at times there are pieces um, that I use um, a brush on some concentrated areas. But uh, seeing that this piece is a monochrome, as it were, so it's easy to work out with a rug and then later on wipe out where I don't want my color and then expose the tones, the white tones that you see. I will expose them again. You will see as we progress onto this piece. Yes, so with time, you will see how it will develop. Now, I'm continuing with my wiring, my thread. I call it a thread. So you put it under the the end part of the the beading the wire the beading that you made so i put it like this just like the way that i started and then pull it up to the top side and then i make a knot again and then i tie so i've got this wire 0 0.9 hanging and this one and this one just leave them like that, and then push them aside, and then take your beads, and then you continue from there. Make sure you make your corset to be straight. Always try to make it straight. The secret is on making your thing, your product to be neat and so that when someone is seeing or buying, then they'll, they'll feel it's worth the amount that you are charging. It must be straight and nice, good looking. Right, friends, as you can see now, I'm making, uh, exposing the tones, as you can see these ones, with um, a clean uh, rug. I just dipped it in into uh, my um, turpentine to clean that, as you can see, to expose that, like that, to make the white tones there of the piece. So, here we go. Here we go. Oh, okay. Thank you. If you want to say something. Okay. So this is how I do my beading. Just work as uh, working from from the center going outwards. And then it same applies to the how uh, making your fruit barrels. You start from the center. Well, let me show the proper one. Oh, maybe this one. You start from the center, going up. So even this one. You start from the center, going up again, up up until the end. Okay. So, even the, the thing that you must be sure of, or maybe careful of, is when you are doing your beads, you must, mustn't leave the, the wire to be hanging out when someone is buying or maybe just touching your product it must be user friendly. It mustn't be full of wire that is hanging around. So always cut the wire, the excess wire that is there, like just like this one. You have to pin it down so that it won't poke someone's fingers, just like this. 
and this one is also a different one because it was because uh, it has this design but just play around with the design the the frame that you have you just play around with it or maybe just leave it like that but i decided to make a a bedding to decorate this this fruit bowl that i have oh this one i have this one that i want to show It's all started from inside. Uh, this is the 0 0.5 that is that you can see. And then the mixing of colors, depending on the, the style that you want, the colors that you want. You see, you make different colors, but starting from inside, the old things start from inside, going out. Then you mustn't uh, allow to have space it must be neat and be tight so that it will stay longer. The, or the wire. This, this wire, I was supposed to use it. As you can see, already it's, it's, the, the beads are put in the wire. They are ready to, to thread around. So I'll cut this uh, 0 0.9 and then I'll continue with the with this wire up, up to the top of the, bus, the bowel, the fruit bowel. So this is how I do my bowels, depending on the, maybe some people they come up with the order, oh, I want white, I want black. Then I start from uh, this uh, product or this basket, this bowel. And then I think, oh, if sometimes when I'm running short of ideas, I can't go outside the, ha the house, or maybe during sunset, then I look at the sky or the sunset, then I see the colors, then I get inspired, and then, then take the colors from the uh, sunset, and then I put them in my bow bowels. So that's how I do my bowels, depending on the, the kind of uh, the color that I want, even the mood, and then I produce more all started from the heart and then said um, I'll make it I'll make it and uh, I think it's that's all I'll continue with my 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 cell for now the cut okay me sake yes um as you can see now, I, I, I just made my, um, doing, the, doing the final touches to this piece, as it were, uh, like the white portions, as it were, but uh, it still needs uh, polishing, like uh, after I've done this first coat, then I uh, leave it to dry for about maybe 20, 30 minutes, it dries, this is oil, and then later on, I'll visit it again to do some um, final touches and uh, doing some um, 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 editing on it, as it were. Like I also use my fingers, as you can see here, uh, playing around on that portion there. So, uh, so I this want is to, it. I want to show you how to finish up the bowel. Oh, okay. 